Ward and whatever. <laughs> what was that? What? What's that sound? Where? It's aliens and they're living in your town. Damn. They have arrived. What? They're all around. So Where? many aliens living in your town. Are you scared what of aliens? What up, weirdos well, out there in weirdo land? We got the whole crew here. Behind. We got a sweet Denny. We got a Ryan Beckett. We have a Vicky. And let's get right into it. Happy National Cereal Day. Yeah, I'm cereal surprised. killer or the the can the the actual breakfast. Beckett is not cereal <laughs> killer, but now you're making me excited. <laughs> I can get into that as well. I can do cereal and cereal killer like that. I like it. Uh, but real quick, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this because we talked about it a lot today in the KVJ show. Real quick, Denny's favorite cereal. Go. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Beckett, go. Raisin Bran. The break. <laughs> Hold Get on. The fuck That's out your I favorite out of all cereal. Yeah, I love raisins. I love raisins. <laughs> what other cereals have you, you tried? You healthy dick. I like raisins. What other cereals Thank have you, you had? <laughs> That's a good compliment. <laughs> Vicky. Well, Actually, it's Raisin Bran, oh. but I'm going to go with, with Golden Graham so I don't get kicked out. What? You got, so out of all the other cereals you've tried out there, those are the ones you guys really... Get them, Debbie. Yeah. I love raisins. <laughs> Me too. Well, I like raisins too, but you can have cereal without <laughs> raisins in it. I like raisin toast is so good. As, I mean, as a kid, I was a big Cap'n Crunch guy with the berries. Yeah, and then you had that bitch boy tongue. Couldn't That's handle right. the fucking berries. They cut up your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have an issue with what you had said in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, y'all, that's enough serial talk. Let's get into the weird stuff. Last week, we had a terrible technical issue. I do apologize. Bottom of my heart, we were really cooking. Felt like we were doing great. Beckett, we never got to your tech it. Beckett, tech it. Oh, I like it. Yeah, you're, uh, give us some tech information that people need to know. So this is a new segment. I always love tech. I always love sexual stuff and pondering and being philosophical. And it's a great segue, you know, talking about technical issues, which coincidentally in a weird spiritual way run the segment last week. So jump right into it. So Denny's is posting um, an article. It shouldn't be paywalled. It was New York Times recently. I just wanted to share it with uh, the Weird and Whatever group and the audience, kind of get feedback in the chat room. Um, the title of the article is, Are We Technosexuals Now? Technosexuals. And it's something I've kind of been talking about, like one of my business ideas, uh, my good friends and startup, he's got this amazing AI collective intelligence companies changing the world for businesses. But my brain goes, you know, I have a lot of friends, girls and guys, they love sexting. You know, when I was a kid, 900 numbers were a big thing. Now you have oh, only yeah. fans, whatever. Hello, Beckett. I'm from Britain. Let me see a cock. Right. And, and I think if you're in a significant other relationship, either A, they're not going to appreciate it, but they're like, hey. I rather them be on Pornhub than actually talking to the girl that works at the office, right? Because it's like a, it's a pressure release valve, if you will, right? You kind of feel like technology sometimes can prevent people from doing terrible things to other humans, i.e., STDs, getting right. them pregnant, not wanting to be in a relationship, trust violations. Okay. Right? right. Like, especially if you're candid, open, and honest with your partner that, hey, I'm on Pornhub or whatever, whatever, you know? I like, I like it raw, baby. Right. And, you know, like, it's on brand, you know, like, they're exercising the demons, right? Like, some people are with significant others, and they're against, obviously, infidelity, but they're okay with going to a gentleman's club, so to speak, right? Because it's not actual physical cheating, right? Well... Is it? Well, I guess it's up for debate, and that's kind Look, of the point, is to like drive discussion. I'm just saying this. I know plenty of women who would not be cool with their husband going to a strip club. I'm not a strip club guy. I, I'm not either. Yeah, I, don't get I, it. I actually do not like strip no, me clubs. Either. It's such a waste of money. Yeah, 100%. But I get that. Yeah. If, you are in a, if you're married and a guy wants to go to a strip club, I get why you would be insecure and not like that. Right. I, but then again, I was... I was raised in a house full of women, and I was mm. also raised in a house full where my mom did not put up with any bullshit right. like that. She goes, fuck you. You're right. strip club? Uh, I'm going to cut your mustache off. 100%. <laughs> and where I was going with my buddy as an AI company changing the world, I was like, well, what if there was an AI sexting app, right? The technology is obviously there with AI, where it's not a real human. Right? You're not interacting with a real human, but 
like these webcams or OnlyFans, like it's it's a transactional relationship. The girl's not going on a date with you, you know, right? Like from what I understand. So with an AI chatbot, and this is what this New York Times article is talking about in part, now the technology is there. You can design your own AI girlfriend, companion, right? Like in terms of what they look like, you know, and it's machine learning. Is, so, is, there, is there a personality to it yes, as well? Yes, 100%. They'll give you pushback, you know, like have their own certain things, but it's machine learning. So if you're into BDSM or you're into hopeless romantic stuff, whatever, the machine learning kind of learns it, right? Vicky, so I have been saying this a lot on KVJ for about 10 years. I always, I get so much shit about always predicting the future through Twilight Zone episodes. <laughs> I go, it's a Twilight Zone episode. What he's describing, and fr from a certain point of view, is a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you think Beckett is right where he's going with this kind of thought? Is, is, it, is that where we're going as a society? Robot sex, robot relationships? Without a doubt. Do I think there's a market for it? Absolutely. Do I think it's good for us in the long run? Probably not. I didn't ask that. I said, <laughs> is it going to happen? I, I oh, it's going to happen. I don't think it Beckett's is. Beckett's already got it in the work, work so mm. of course it's going to happen. I don't think it's good for us. And I, I don't. And I, 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 I'm with you on that. And I do think we need more human reactions. Yeah. Technology is really. 100%. It is tearing us apart as a species. We are so separated. Mm. It doesn't give a sense of community. I like technology. I do. I like it. Yeah. But shit, man, we got to we gotta talk about how it is a drug. We just go out to eat. And look at the tables around you with the children and the parents or even pe couples out. Somebody is going to have their phone in their hand instead of having a real conversation Without with somebody. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, it, I, go, go ahead. Back I was here. just going to say, you know, it's the it's the rule of the universe. It's physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We, social media has raised amazing amounts of money for charities. It's brought old friends and families together. And it's caused people to be depressed and it's caused horrible things also. So there's always good and bad trade-offs, right? Equal and opposite reaction. So with this technology, you know, remember now we're at, you know, at one point it was weird to get into a stranger's car for a ride. Now it's old hat. You know, in my 20s, when you were on a dating app, you what are you, a loser? Now, if you're single and in your 20s or early 30s and you're not on a date, different. you're that, not on a dating app. Like, what's wrong with you? Why wouldn't you be on a dating stigma app? Stigma has been blown. Up. It's kind of like tattoos. Remember yeah. when tattoos? Oh, she has a tattoo. Everyone's got tattoos. Right. It's not a thing. I remember that was a thing back in the day. Oh yeah. And that's what we call the hedonistic curve, right? So there's a lot of stimulation on something in the early days, and whether it's a cup of coffee or it's a certain interaction. As it starts to become less and less stimulating mm -hmm. over time. And in this article that we're posting, that we're discussing, it said, and this has been in the news, since the early 90s, people are having less actual sex. They're not, not to say they're less sexual, they're either equally sexual based on research studies and surveys, or they're more sexual, right? Or they have more sex in front of them in their life at the very least, right? So... You know, we have brought this up. We've had discussions off the podcast and, you know, you talk about Black Mirror, Twilight Zone, dystopian type things. Remember Demolition Man with Sandra Bullock oh, yeah. and uh, Stallone? Go, could, the seashells. If you don't mind, in 10 seconds, give the synopsis of that scene that you're talking mm -hmm. about so everyone knows what you're talking so about. So Stallone's character is from the past. Uh, he's like 40 years into the future with Sandra Bullock's character. And he thinks that she's propositioning him to have sex. He starts taking his clothes off. She's like, ew. What are you doing? You exchange bodily fluids. 10 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> exchange bodily fluids, risk unwanted pregnancy and STDs, and they have haptic suits and they have VR, yes. and that's their sexual experience, right? So, you know, I just brought this up for conversation in the chat room amongst ourselves for our audience. Like, you know, you could talk about this, and, and it's important to talk about things like this in terms of what's good for society, what's good for yourself, what's good for your relationship, what's bad for your relationship. I don't know the answer. Well, to your point, I, I bring it up a lot. The, the one situation where the guy and his wife were in a different – she got a different job, and they were, they were off there's, on their schedule. Yeah. And he ended up really – because their schedule was so off – he was sleeping while she was working and vice versa, so he got into porn. And to the point where 
he really couldn't even get hard anymore when they would start to have sex because he'd jerk off the heat two, just or, occur. two or three times. He, it started off so benign, he said, because then all of a sudden I'm jerking off three times and I was really just right. boredom on top of time, mm-hmm. on top of no discipline. Right. I mean, I, I'm over here. I like porn. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing if it's done the right way, but like anything. It's like you, alcohol. You, you can, can overindulge. Overdo, you can absolutely overdo on porn mm-hmm. to the point it changes your chemistry slightly, and I do think you can get that chemistry back yeah. like anything. You just have to so. quiet your mind. You can even overwork out. You can underwork out. You can overwork out. Oh. Like there's overstimulation on everything. You know, to be totally candid with you guys in the audience, I think one of the reasons I originally got into sexting is because yeah. you know, back in World War <laughs> Two, back in World War Two, they used to write like these amazing love letters back and forth, like over the Atlantic. But I had some very serious long distance relationships, and when I was in college, for example. You weren't going to see your girlfriend uh, for three, four weeks. It was a way to like keep intimacy up. Right? Do you think back in the day? Okay, I'm talking World War II, Vicky, and I, this is going to be vulgar. So I, <laughs> I, I, I'm trigger warning. Sexting, you know, these days people get kind of crazy with what <laughs> they text. Do you think in the history of World War II letters, someone said, "Yeah, baby, give me that facial. Show me some ankle." I, no, I'm yeah. saying <laughs> I'm saying over the top. Put in my ass and give me that facial, like over the top shit that we I'm hear sure. here now. Or was that? I guess my question is when? When's that moment where society changes and goes, "Yeah, this is what we're doing. This is what we're all into." Kind of. When the social norms turn, she's right. The she's absolutely it. right. Yeah, when it becomes regularized or whatever. When, when it, I, I always call it the soccer mom theory. When the soccer yeah. mom, as soon as you hear soccer moms are doing mushrooms, guess what? Mushrooms are mainstream, baby. They're yeah, mainstream. No, it's, mainstream. It's, it's true. Vicky, they are mainstream. You heard Becca talk a lot about what he was saying. Your right. thoughts on what he's saying. The first thought that pops into my head is I, I think about a sexual predator. So I think about him honing his skills in this you know, virtual reality, and that's not going to satisfy him because it's not an actual act. And But the problem is that he's going to perfect it prior to acting on it with a real human being. Yeah, no. It, it actually could be a dragnet, actually, for sexual predators, actually, because well, it, with the technology, they, they all leave fingerprints. There was just an article uh, in the news today where this uh, group got picked up in Boca for some crazy stuff that was in the news today. I actually went to high school with one of the guys, by the way. Blew my mind. That That's- he yeah. was a part of it? Yeah. Really? And what yeah, was yeah. the charge overall? Like- so they were filming. They had the girlfriend, the son, minors involved. And I got sent around in my like high school friend group. What, you, the girl, like, wait, what do you mean? An adult film, the girlfriend and son having sex? I don't, I don't know the details of it, but it was part. And the FBI, would, they were live streaming it and selling it. And they were in court being arraigned today or yesterday. It was in the news today. But, you know, FBI goes in there. It's like, uh, what's that guy? Is Chris Hansen? He's like, take a seat. Oh, we you know, to catch so a to catch a catch a predator. We were just talking about it today. And, Dude. And, and, and I know this is a weird analogy, but when you had billboards and magazines, there was no analytics for advertising. Now with technology, you have a live stream. You have now you have fingerprints. Now you have forensics actually going in. So it actually, in a way, could be a way to have a dragnet for predators, right? Like, yeah. you know, I'm kind of being a little Pollyanna, well, but it's the true. But my whole thing is, especially the older I get, I, I really, being in the media, I see a lot of stuff in the media that really bothers me. A lot of division, a lot of deliberate fake division mm-hmm. just to get clicks and shares. And that that does hurt my heart. I right. don't like that. I, I want to get a sense of community. So w- when you see uh, things like that, it, it is disheartening. With that said, I'm not trying to be a worry, a, a worry Warren here. Mm-hmm. There is a prevalent problem, a big problem with dudes trying to get underage girls, man. There's just so many videos and so many examples of going, 
What the fuck? Danny, am I, am I off on this? No. In fact, I, I think I've told the story before. When I was visiting Colorado and I was hanging out with my family, we just put the news on while you're doing stuff in the kitchen. And on the news, I, when I was in Colorado, I used to work at the Apple store. On the news, there was a guy who I used to work with, became a youth pastor, and he was soliciting sex with a 13-year-old. Oh, oh my God. He I has mean, to be like, I don't know, so 32. So Jaybird says cheating's like one of the corporal you know punishment kind of things which well, I, I agree with like well, that is someone that needs to burn in hell no 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 yeah. when i say cheating what i mean is I, I don't look people cheat and i think they can cheat and be a good person after i mm -hmm. i don't think you're you have a scarlet letter what i'm saying is it's the death of a relationship if oh, somebody cheats, trust is gone yeah i think i think people i think there are great people yeah. out in the land that have cheated and they realize that was the wrong move so and you, they can get better so you don't believe in the saying once a cheater always a cheater not at Really? All, that's such an absolute statement. Because like, I had someone that was that's such a Sith statement, <laughs> dude. People make fucking mistakes, right. and they realize when they get quiet and still and spiritual or whatever that version is of you to become your authentic self. Hmm. People go, man, that wasn't the right thing to do, and I don't right. want to be that way anymore. Right. That does exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. It, it really does. That's fair. I, I, I'm not saying that's the, the thing with everybody. Yeah, but it's a thing that we all should. Keep in mind when someone's trying to do better and give them a little grace when they have fucked up. Yeah, totally. And I, I, I think there's certain crimes and things people do where you no. go, I can't give them grace. No, and I, you can't. And I, mm -hmm. under, and I understand that. But then there's other things yeah. outside of that yeah. that I do feel like we do hold on to a little bit too long, possibly. Yeah. Well, to make it go full circle, you know, to me, like anything underage is like the obviously you burn in hell. It's the worst crime ever. But in addition to that, like we're talking about overdoing things like alcohol as it relates to tech and anything with sexuality i think that you know i don't have kids yet but your neurological pathways are, are growing so whether it's porn or it's ai chatbots or something like that that needs to be something that definitely needs to be legislated and it needs to be reserved for adults mm -hmm. right like whether it's a dating app or whether it's an ai sex spot or whatever that the brain needs to be fully developed before we let kids get any hands Drugs, on any of that. Yeah, any porn, of it. Well, any of that stuff. It's crazy. It really, do, I mean, it's such a hack topic to bring up, mm -hmm. but you can fight for the country and die for it at 18, but you can't get a fucking beer. Kind of weird, no? Yeah, you're, I, is that not fucking weird? I totally agree. If you defend our country, my God, give that motherfucker a beer if they want it. You can drink on a base. And I'm not trying to be. For sure, I'm not. I'm, I'm not at all trying to be pandering because I get that's a pandering topic. Yeah. I really believe that. I, yeah. I do. I go. What the shit? Well, Any I think, thoughts? I think oh, the no, drinking uh, age used to be 18, and yeah. then they changed it to 21. I think there was a period not that long ago where some people well, had well, it turned I, 21 and then 18. And yeah, then, no, it was 19, and I was the victim uh, of that. Uh, yes. The cutoff was like June of that year when I would have turned 19. And I missed the cutoff by two months. So I had a boyfriend who was legally allowed to drink, and name? I had to wait till I was 21. That's name? Hilarious. Name of what? The boyfriend? The boyfriend? Oh, yeah, we want a name. Patrick. Patrick. So I, I think what happened is there was... Pat, back, not to okay. cut you off, but yeah. I kind of wanted to ask a little bit, did Patrick bring that heat? <laughs> that one I'm not answering. Don't answer. <laughs> Sorry, Becky. No, that's okay. I no, think, no, go, go on. I think the federal government dangled funding for like I-95 and federal highways over states by saying, hey, we have studies that people drinking between 18 and 21 have a greater risk of drinking and driving, not drinking responsibly. So if you want funding for federal roads, you as a state can decide to have your drinking age at 16. You could decide to have it at 25. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying and our we're legislating and for you to get earmarked funding you have to be 21 and that's why a lot of all the states acquiesced beckett or beckett you're not beckett you're denny's <laughs> uh did you want to have a rebuttal on that i apologize i was reading the chat and then i was uh, trying to talk to you no nah, I'm, I'm absorbing the talk <laughs> <laughs> hearing about patrick <laughs> I do want to take the time to uh, give a shout out to our chat room. We really do have a very awesome, active chat room that is, uh, they do, they, they care about our podcast and we know that and we, we care about you. So and again, not pandering. We do mean that uh, I'm, I'm speaking for the group. Uh, am I, am I lying? 
No, you're not lying. <laughs> Philly, <laughs> Philly Steve might get in the chat room tonight, just so oh. you know. He was in no one knows who the fuck that is, Beckett. You got to give a little backstory. He was in the live audience. He's one of my best friends. Sold him a uh, house on the street. I re- yeah, he has I a pool, which means now I now have a pool. That's, That's great. awesome. I have a pool too, Beckett. I, although Crow's been swimming in it lately, I don't know if you. I don't know I'm if still it's... waiting for the pizza <laughs> menagerie on the the Mars site at the bottom of the pool. Remember we discussed that? I, I do remember that. <laughs> I do. All right, l- let's get back on track and let's do a little ask Vicky. Who's ready for that? Dun, 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 Very dun, popular dun, dun, segment dun, dun, here. Yeah, where's that song? You remember the lead? Ask Vicky. Ask Vicky. Huh? You know, you're right. We we, we got really, we, we, we got do we, we got me and Danny's got to sit down. We gotta we gotta get some theme song for the weird and whatever and that put some be the love. Next thing we work on. Hundred 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 percent. Dear weird and whatever, Vicky, can you be happy staying in an earthbound uh, as an earthbound spirit, or are you going to always feel a sense of loss and emptiness? More than likely, you're going to feel a sense of loss and loneliness because whatever is keeping you there, if you're there because you're watching someone grow up, like you actually have more freedom to follow them around if you just go to the other side, check in and come back in visitation. And the natural process is for us to die, cross over, and then we're granted our freedoms to go back and forth in visitation. That's just the way it's supposed to be. So when you're sitting here and you've been here 200 years and there's no one whatsoever, guess what? You're not seeing that person that you stuck around for in the first place because they crossed over. Wow. Yeah. So That's... I, in my personal opinion, being earthbound is not the option. And, the preferred I, is to go on. Yes, because it's the natural process. I do apologize, Vicky, if you are new to the podcast, because we do have some new people, Beckett. Uh, she is a psychic medium. She is the leader of a ghost team. She knows her shit, y'all. She's our ghost expert. <laughs> and per the last <laughs> podcast, apparently you guys think that I'm less skeptical than Denny's now. I, I th- yeah. w- without a doubt, Denny's is our biggest skeptic. Oh. Ah. I, I, no, no, I, I love that. I like skeptics, man. Mm-hmm. You need to put people on off balance. I, I'm just a small town kid from Lake Park. Just because I got a microphone in front of my face does not mean what I say is right. It's just my opinion. So I like when people, e- even haters, you're annoyed by them, but they do level you up, man. Mm-hmm. You need them. I'm bringing pictures in for Vicky to look at her eyes and figure <laughs> it out. Like, oh, you're it's dude, going in my algorithm. You actually <laughs> became a psychic cuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, quickly, uh, Vicky. We turned him real quick. Yeah. <laughs> one thing, and he one, like, boom. Yeah, one conversation. She's like, "Oh, I believe it's yeah. like <laughs> I believe it. I'm scared of ghosts." It was quick. <laughs> uh, dear Vicky, I feel like spirits come into my life when I'm playing music. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any correlation with spirit and music? And I, I do love that comment. I personally do think. Whatever's going on in my house is without a doubt something involved with music. Vicky, when I play your mother's piano, that was your mom's piano, right? It, well, it was given to my mom by her friend. And my mom accepted it so that my daughter could learn how to play piano. But you, there's a yeah, connection. But she owned it. There's a connection with that piano with mm-hmm. your mother. The, yes. the piano I hear? Yes. Wow. Vicky gave that I to me. I did not know. Denny's. Mm-hmm. I was not going to take that piano because I was moving into my house. I had to bring Chewy. I was so involved emotionally with Chewy trying to get him to the house. I go, I can't deal with the fucking piano. It's out out west. Uh, we don't have a team to move it. Danny goes, bro, she got a piano, man. Bring it into your house. 100%. You're, you're going to be happy when you have the piano. That's a good friend. It's a great friend. Vicky, Vicky and Danny's, and of course you too, Beckett, but... <laughs> Great friends because they gave me guidance in a time where I didn't even know I needed guidance. Mm. <laughs> she didn't know she was giving me guidance by giving me the piano. He did He did know he was giving me guidance. <laughs> and what that did for me in the last two years, it, it made me learn piano. It made me and Denny's become better piano players. It just, it, it was a positive thing. So when you do a small act like that, sometimes it does have a big ripple effect. Yeah, so it... I, I do feel like when I play the piano, that piano, I don't know, shit gets active in here. Thoughts? Yeah, I do believe that music can attract certain spirits. Years ago, um, my mom would take my kids to church and I would stay home. And But I would want to be still religious, so I would get on the computer that was in the days of MySpace 
<laughs> and so you could go through your music or whatever. So anyway, every time I played a religious song, I felt there was this elderly woman. She had gray hair. It was in a bun. She would come into my family room where I was playing that music, and she enjoyed the fact that I was you know, listening to religious music at that time. I firmly believe that she was attracted just to that music. I don't know where she came from. I don't know why she popped in. Every time I played it, that woman was there. I mean, I, I talk about the one, I feel like she's a 1920s, 1930s type of woman here in the house, Beckett, that's got a little bit of a va va voom air to her that does kind of present her I don't know, energy. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, Beckett, thoughts? Uh, I think music has got to be, other than like looking for food and sex, has got to be one of the oldest things connected to humans. Introspective. Introspective. Uh, just, just learning about life. 100%. It's, I mean, when you think about it, uh, think about a lot of the, the songs you love that really hit you in the heart. It's basically someone giving you a melodic journal piece yeah. from mm -hmm. a certain point of view. And it's amazing. Sometimes you can hear a song a million times and then you're going through something in life and you hear that song on the radio and you're like, ooh. Like, damn. I, oh, I, think it was, I think it was Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler where he, he talks about I think he's talking about writing songs. He goes, man, I just, I love when I'm in the car and I, I hear a song and the guy or a girl's talking about, yeah, I'm fucking going through that shit. Yeah. I understand what you're talking about. 100%. It, it's a, it's a communication. It's a language. It's poetry with a melody. Yeah. It's weird that when humans hear music, you, they lose control. They do. You just <laughs> want to, you, you have to control. move to it. <laughs> you do, man. There, there are certain, even if I'm in Publix. I won't even notice that I'm doing it. A, a song will come on, and I'm shaking that ass. I'm fucking throwing it, Denny. So what is that? Why do we hear just syncopation or rhythm, and then we just lose control? I, I think it's one of them things like an electricity where we tapped into something that is a human connection kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whenever I felt depressed growing up, I'd grab my headphones. That was back when your stereo had all those different components and mm -hmm. those big speakers and, and stuff, so... I would have to get my headphones so I didn't blast out the house, but it got me out of depression every single time. Mm. I'm 57 years old, never thought about getting a tattoo. I got a tattoo, and it's what? It's Prince's Prince. symbol because his music meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cried like a little bitch on the air because Billy Joel came out with a new song. Great song. Beckett, I couldn't even control myself. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. I, 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 was trying, I was trying not Resonates. to cry. It fucking kicked me in the dick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is drug-like. Yeah, yeah. It, no? is, it makes you feel like you're on drugs, kind of. It, it, it can. If you have headphones that cut out the outside noise and you're, I don't know, the sun is setting, it almost feels drug-like. The oh, thing I, I took hard uh, the, the biggest last week was we weren't able to play our local musician we're going to play them I tonight. Up. That's awesome. Uh, to pre-sell that, this week's featured artist is 33 Lions, and they're going to be playing their song, Memories. Mm -hmm. Got to give them some love. We love local creative people. Artists of all sorts. We love it. Music, definitely. Yes. Um, here's a, another question for Vicky. I lost a loved one to suicide. My family says my brother didn't move on because he was. it was a selfish act. This hurts me when they say that. I don't believe it. But are they right? What I've been shown is they're absolutely 100% wrong. That it doesn't matter how you pass, that you are allowed to go to the other side. If you are willing to go, there are people who are assigned to take us. My personal view on it, I grew up thinking that it was a sin. But when you think about it, if you believe in God, God knew exactly what he put on your shoulders. He knew that you have mental illness. He knew that this happened to you, that this happened to you. How is he going to punish you? We're supposed to be, growing up, we were told we were God's children. Well, a parent doesn't turn their back on their child regardless of what they do. So why would he turn his back on us when we do something like that, when he knows you had this whole stack of things piled on your back? To get controversial and to get on the devil's advocate, because it's not what I believe, but it's something I think we should talk about. Do you still have that same thought and belief for a murderer, for a rapist, for someone who's done the most despicable acts on the planet right. that that do die and they are in 
sort of sort of speak the same kind of a situation where you it, uh, not same but yeah, me- meaning that there there's there's a judgment there there is a judgment and what i've been shown and this can be controversial i've never been shown hell and also to get what hell is not in the bible it's a mis the bible versions that may possibly have a hell here and there that was a mistranslation when lucifer and his minions fell they fell to earth they didn't fall to a place called hell so to me and what i've been shown if you're a ser- serial killer or a pedophile or any of those things when you go to the other side you're allowed to go to the other side but you have to do the work to change yourself you go into those classrooms and you are not allowed freedom until you have worked through that whole process and what you should have learned and how you should have lived your life. And I know people want to hear, oh, they did this and they went to hell and there's no saving their soul. I'm sorry, I've been shown something different. Yeah, and I, I, I've already seen comments. When I said it's, what I meant was, I'm saying there's a judgment to it on the right. on the earthbound level. I've always heard if you commit suicide, it's right. a selfish act. And I was trying to make the comparison of there's a forgiving there's there's a forgiveness for that. Is there the same forgiveness for for somebody that does those des- despicable acts? Well, there it's not a, to me. I don't think of it as forgiveness and thing. I it's work. They yeah. have to go and do a bunch of work before they're ever allowed freedom ever again. So it, it's, it's, trust me, they're in a classroom there. I know people want them to burn, but what I've been you're, shown is that they don't. You're ta- now you're talking about suicide people or no, I'm talking about serial, serial killer. killers, or murders, just, so like the, yeah. war, the, the pedophiles, all those. What, what you're saying is when they die, it's not the end all be all right. for them. There is a, uh, there, there, there is hope for that soul. The, the, I mean, they'll eventually, who knows how many eons they will finally earn their freedoms. Now, people that I I have read for people who have loved loved ones who committed suicide. I've been shown that even if they do go to a classroom, it's usually a very short amount of time because again, I think it's taken into consideration. They were schizophrenic. They were this, they were that, and they had all these things on their plate. And so they go to a classroom quickly and then they're allowed their freedoms. If if I may, I'm a PJP to graduate Catholic school boy and remember the Bible was written by humans exactly. and if there's anything we know about humans they know how to mess up a good thing mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and you know there were certain things that were built in religion as we know in history and society that were to control the masses like even I know it's a crazy analogy but even circumcision that was something that was more hygienic and whatever it was something built into religion right and I think religion in terms of trying to give a disincentive or a fear against suicide was like, hey, you're not going to go to the other side, whatever, whatever. But to Vicky's point, God, higher power, whatever you believe in in your religion, you know, it's reasonable to think if you believe in a higher power, it's what I like to believe. He knows, she knows, they know that if that was in someone, you know, like their loved ones that had that horrible loss, like they had to deal with that. Right. And and of course, like, you know, they understand that, like whoever the higher power Mm -hmm. is, whatever you believe in, they were going through it. Right. Like, obviously, Um, by the way, personally, on a personal, I, I, so with Vicky on this, I, I do not at all feel like someone who's committed suicide is, Cast it out in this right. fucking cornfield of right. despair. I, I do not believe it. Yeah. Um. To to to, to back up everything. What you I don't want to believe saying. in that kind of higher power. Kind yeah. Of, no. Quite to honestly. Me, well, they, what, gaslighting God. Is yeah. 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 Exactly. We're dating now. Is he a narcissist? Or, yeah. Does he, fucking <laughs> work? Does, does he write for Cosmo? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. I I I I do think. I think a lot of a lot of shit that keeps us kind of down emotionally are human concepts that are. Kind of, I don't want to say high school because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to piss off our, our religious audience. But what I'm saying is, it's people saying this is what it is and that's the way it is. Let's and, do hydrogenated fats. Like the best thing on the food pyramid they teach you in school is eat bread. Yeah. You know, like you What's know. What's wrong with that, Becca? <laughs> Only yeah, if it yeah. has tomato sauce and cheese on it. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, great stuff. That, that's a that's a tough topic to talk about. I almost didn't do it, but I do get that question a lot. And look, I don't I, I don't want to run from topics here. 
And it does. It breaks my heart. I can't tell you how many people that I have read for who had someone who committed suicide, and they're really struggling with that. And thank goodness that person was able to come through, the one who committed suicide, and was able to give me enough detail to verify that it was them and to say, no, it's it's okay now. Yeah. Here in the Weird and Whatever podcast, we believe that you're not casted out into a fucking cornfield, and there's... There, it, don't lose hope and don't let that break you down spiritually. And anybody who gets wrapped up in believing everything that's written in the Bible, which was written by man and translated and retranslated and translated again, all you have to do, sit down, read the Old Testament, read the New Testament, tell me how many discrepancies you see. Right. Vicki, we can't get regular news stories in real time <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. So you're, I mean, I'm not trying to be... Right. I'm just saying, you're going to tell me a story from fucking 5,000 years ago, and I'm just going to go, yep, okay, yeah, it's exactly to that. What? <laughs> yeah. When In real time, we see as people, people can't get it right go, going in, in the now, Denny's mm-hmm. thoughts. No, I, I agree with everything you guys are saying. Uh, <laughs> a game of telephone. Exactly, yeah. Well, so also, uh, there's a H.P. Lovecraft story I like where the – there's a guy breaking into a university to steal a different translation of the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, because the translation he has when he did the incantation was incorrect because it was translated poorly from another language, the original language being, I'm guessing, Spanish or Latin. Uh, so he's trying to steal that version. But kind of like the Bible, too. The thing's been rewritten a lot of times. Yeah. Each person who wrote it, they put it in a lot. Interpreted line. differently. Books taken out completely. For Enoch sure. Enoch was, was taken out of the Bible. Also, the Divine Comedy, that story, has a lot of religion built into it. And I think it's confused a lot of things because there's Lucifer in hell in that. And it, I don't, like you said, I don't know if that's necessarily in, especially like the First Testament. It doesn't really refer to a hell of any sort, stuff like that. I think, and also the Seven Deadly Sins are from the Divine Comedy. And I feel like those are often incorporated into the Bible as well. I know they do have, you know, things you shouldn't do and stuff that are sins, so but I don't know if they're as specific as the are divine you s- comedy. Are you saying the Bible stole the divine no, comedy? No, no, divine saying, comedy stole. From so the that Bible? that that story is very. Uh, that's where he, Dante goes through hell, limbo, and heaven, and basically he has a guide who tells him what each thing is. So it's a person just going through, passing through rather. Out of the three. I sometimes wonder if Limbo might be worse than hell. Definitely. Limbo's the first one. Gosh, Limbo sucks, So the weird part is to get to heaven, and it makes sense because Lucifer falls in that, and then he goes through, and he's stuck in a lake of ice, right? So it's from the waist down. But they climb down his dick to get to heaven. Slow down. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I just thought that was such a weird... Old school thing to write in. They they have to climb down his leg. That was a hard yeah. climb. Which kind of shows you. <laughs> kind of shows that we've always been kind of obsessed with just fucking. Oh, and, well, yeah, and but ditching to, puss. It's, it's biological, <laughs> right? It's procreation. Yeah, they, they climb, you know? That's how they get to heaven. We've always been yeah. just animals. It, it's it's a weird segue, but why we're on the topic? Like I always like to bring it up when the opportunity presents itself. If you are going through it, like you got to talk to your loved ones, like check in on your loved ones. I just Googled it. I don't think it's been publicized enough. Of course, there's 911. There's 988, which is a new suicide and crisis lifeline that the government's put out. Anytime you're going through it, even if you just need to talk to someone, please reach out. Please reach out to loved ones. Check in on your friends. Check on your loved ones. It's a really important thing to do. And I think it's important on that to kind of piggyback that you reach out to the right loved ones because – there are some people when you are desperate and you do need help and you, you try to reach out, they almost block you off. And right. I know it's it's tough during your depression and during your mental storm yeah. to kind of even process that. My, my whole thing would be there is someone that does want to listen to you 100%. and that wants to make you feel better. And it may take a little bit of grit. And a little bit of dirt and a little bit of just you trying it out to get to the right person. Because I get it, man. Some people don't want to hear fucking problems. Right. But there is a type of personality that really is nurturing and takes it in in a way that yeah. can help you. Yeah. It's kind of like dating. It, there's an ask for every seat. You just, it takes a little work sometimes. Yeah. Reach out to the empath, friend. 
Yes, yeah. reach out to the empath because not everyone's like that. And yeah. I, I get it. I understand yeah. that because we've all had the one friend that's not sensitive at all. It was a cold dick. Yeah, yeah. And we've also had the friend that's so oversensitive mm. that they're a crying fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch boy Beckett. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have the people that were taught by society. If someone comes to you and they're depressed or whatever, you throw all these positive platitudes at them and they don't mean you harm, but that's actually toxic positivity. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that is just as toxic as real well, negativity in your face and people just you want to be heard right. if you're upset someone saying well there's starving children in Africa you ought to be lucky that you had a good meal before your husband left you I mean those kind of things don't help right. no no in fact it's so not at all in the realm of the fucking discussion it's right. going I, I just lost my leg in an accident why are you so bad at math <laughs> right. like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about right. it doesn't make any f- I mean, it, 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 look everything's perspective Even if you're the richest person or the poorest person, you're still a human and you're going to go through the emotions of being a human. So what's not a big deal to you is going to be possibly a big deal to somebody else. And I think we all should just give ourselves a little bit of grace. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm not saying be a doormat and let people who have emotional problems Run roughshod on you because that's not cool either. To Vicky's point, you you're not helping them. Right. But there's a there's a a, a, a kindness, but a strong kind of hard love talk you can have. Without a doubt. Yeah. Great stuff, guys. With that said, yes, Denny's. With that said, what bird? Did something happen? I just I saw you look down. Oh no! Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was turning my ears. Jaber's a little gun shy. I saw you. <laughs> something s- sounded different in my headphones, and then I saw you look down at the box, and I go, "Oh, oh, no. oh I was, shit!" I was it turning f- my ear towards you so I could hear what you were announcing. Oh, Becky, you're gonna like this number. We got 69 people watching right now. Oh, that's wow. right. That's right. Praying. I tried. This is an email. I tried praying <laughs> recently. But I suck at it. I was wondering if any of you pray, and if you do, what does it sound like? Do you pray, Vicky? I don't know if you classify it as praying. I used this. I told this example not too long ago. I was like constantly. I would meet somebody, and I'd say, "Oh, please let this be the one. Let this be the one. Please, God, let this be the one." And then I realized I was telling God what I wanted instead of letting God. So now I changed it to, "Please let the right man come into my life." Mm-hmm. So I have turned it back over to Him. Um, I do on occasion I'll say, you know, please let my daughter get to and from whatever safely and things like that. I'm not an expert on praying for sure. No, I, I only ask because I really I'm very curious to hear how everybody deals with this stuff because some people don't pray. Some people do. I have my own personal story that I, I want to get into. Beckett, what are your thoughts? So this is how, very, how do you pray? This is very honest. I'm a desperate prayer, right? Like I don't find myself very religious. Unless I'm going through something tough. Then all of a sudden I find myself a little religious, right? And now I find myself praying and I pray as like a voice inside my head, right? Hoping someone higher power hears what I'm saying. Please, please, God, make it just chlamydia. Please, chlamydia. Just make it chlamydia. I just don't get it. (laughs) Yeah, one of the curable ones. (laughs) You know, so I just kind of put it out there, whether you believe in the secret and you're not religious or you're Catholic or you're Buddhist or you're spiritual or whatever. I'm like, like, listen, I'm putting this out in the atmosphere and my undercurrent, like Vicky, is Christian. It's come in and out of my life, like throughout my entire life. And, you know, whether I'm going through a tough time or something I really want, all of a sudden, like, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where, like, we were, like, people, like, we kind of were talking about the dystopian thing with the uh, Black Mirror thing. We're like, hey, can you get uploaded to a server? Or do you want to roll the dice and say, hey, I'm going to roll my dice Mm -hmm. on that there's a heaven? Like, that's really the shit test. Oh, yeah. That's That's really the shit test, right? And, you know, when I'm going through a tough time, I'm like, wow. I, it's kind of like an internal thought. Maybe I'm more religious than I thought I was. You'd have to be if you're praying in moments. Yeah. All right, sweet Denny's. You are the one I was the most curious to talk oh, to yeah. about that. Praying. If you were to take off all of your social graces hats and say your honest opinion about praying, what would you say? So I like the concept of praying. I think it is good because all right. So I don't necessarily ever pray ever for I've never in my entire life, but not because of any reason. I just never was told to do it, and so I just never did it. 
But I don't even know what I would use it for. What I, you, what, what? More so, I would I do a just an internal dialogue. I think humans by nature have to talk out things mm. in their head. So you more or less talk to yourself, so to speak, in your 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 personal voice. But when it comes to God and and talking and praying. Not even a thought. I not feel not, like not even as a kid. I just feel like he doesn't want to hear from my ass at all <laughs> for any reason. He has no need. There's plenty of other people out there talking to him. God, please make sure I throw this touchdown pass. Please, come on. If we, you don't mind we me, gotta win the big game. If you don't mind me asking, has being a father changed your perspective at all on any of that? On religion, or no. religion, and, and life, and life, and how you're thinking about it, and having a baby definitely changes your entire life as far as perspective and everything. It adds a new emotion. It just it does a lot of different things to you. So I, I feel like to be unaffected by it would be very difficult. But that is something that. I get on a human level. I think what Beckett's asking: Did it change your perspective on God, God or spiritual? Because because what I what I would add maybe just a little context to that. I think that when you're single or maybe even when you're married, you can kind of float by a little bit. But when you bring another life into the world, oh. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. dude, but, it's next level. But but. You, it's got to it's got to hit your spiritual keys it, a little bit. If it doesn't, check your fucking pulse. Right? It does <laughs> give you a mortality check. Yeah. Oh yeah. It makes you think, all right, I have to start doing some responsible things with you know how I, my lifestyle or whatever. But the meat and potatoes, no change on the on the god thing. It hasn't changed that <laughs> for me, but it it does make you think about your own mortality and then really just I mean, it's just amazing because I guess so much time passes. I turned 40 last year. So much of my life happened before I ever had a son, right? He only is going to know me from this point forward. There's been everything I've known up until this point. So much folklore. It's just so (laughs) much. So (laughs) looking at, you know, thinking about my own parents' life, it makes you think about that type of stuff, more grand scope. It does. It gives you a perspective of going, everyone's a human, and they were just trying to figure it out just like me. And we just forget, even though, you know, I've lived my entire life through my own eyes, the early years are pretty tough to uh, recollect. And just watching, because Lachlan's going to turn... One year and two months. This Saturday, it's he's insane. ten months old. It's insane. <laughs> so at this point, he's already climbing on things, walking a few steps before falling, uh, stuff like that. Just you just don't even realize that you learn that so quick. You know, he's just, he, he, he's the best baby. I love him every day. The instincts. It's uh, there is you know theories about the collective conscious where everyone just shares mm. certain things when you're born. You automatically just know them because we all share a collective right. conscious. On certain things, also people's uh, feelings on how society and stuff is, is all in the collective conscious as well. So you wonder. Well, I mean, since Denny's can't shut the fuck up, I <laughs> think it might be time for some Denny's, Denny's random, random facts. You know, I'm just kidding, by the way. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'll get an email, don't be mean to Denny's. No. And it, it's very hard to be mean to Denny's, man. I, I, <laughs> even, even in comedy. The only thing I would push Denny's on a little bit is like, so you think, you know, on the religion tip, so you think when you pass away, that's it? Yeah. So it's so you like, think your time on your earth with your son, you like know, great question. Well, you way. think your time on your earth, like say, Denny's is obviously going to live to 110. So that would be awesome. So you've done a lot of. You had this myself. certain amount of time with your son and your wife. Like you think that it's just blackness afterwards. It's tough, man. I mean, there's multiple religions out there that all have their own interpretations of what they think the afterlife is. I it, mean, it makes it kind of tough to confidently feel especially without any upbringing in it Mm -hmm. just confidently believe in one like well i think we should give some context because denny's was gracious enough to explain this to us his parents were allowed him to explore his own religion my parents aren't necessarily religious but to denny's point it has been a very big struggle my entire life because it's kind of tying in what you said and what denny says i used to pray all the time and then around 21 I realized I was being a hypocrite and I was only praying to God like Santa Claus mm. Mm. when I messed up and please don't blah, blah, yeah. blah. And it wasn't right. And I knew that in my heart that it wasn't right. So I kind of abandoned praying and God and all that stuff to kind of figure out just who I was as a person. Cause I didn't think I was doing God or praying mm. right to what you're saying, right. but to what Denny's is saying, I want to believe in something, and I am a believer. I'm a person that tends to go on that side. 
but there are some moments, and maybe Vicky can help me out with this. I don't know why. I don't believe that day. I don't have faith. I struggle with it. I feel like there is nothing. But then on another day, I go, of course there's something. What are your thoughts on that, Vicky? Well, I think because it's not a concrete concept. Because you can't literally look up and see God. You can't literally look around and see religion and it working. So I think, I think human beings, we are very concrete thinkers. So we go ahead and we go out on a limb and we believe something we can't see and all that stuff. We have plenty of people in the chat room that, you know, don't believe in ghosts, mm-hmm. you know, because they can't see them. And it's the same concept. Just, just think about abstract art. Art, we have to matrix and we have to try to find something that makes sense in an abstract painting because we just can't enjoy the fact that it's abstract. Mm-hmm. So I think it's the same concept that we need to, it's just not concrete enough for us to be a hundred percent in there all the time. Well, I think we've tap danced on the analogy and it resonates with me a little bit cause it's kind of how my brain works, but you could try to convince me of the FM radio frequency Mm. I can't see an FM radio frequency and you can try to convince me of it. I I don't know if I really believe in it. You're like, oh, yeah, there's an FM radio frequency. But when I laugh on my way to work here in the KVJ show, I'm like, oh, shit, there is an (laughs) FM radio frequency because to Vicky's point, now it's concrete. Mm -hmm. Now I've heard it. Now I've seen Seen it. it. But it's always existed. I do. I do like a couple things I want to talk about. I do like the fact that you promoted our our morning show. (laughs) But I don't believe that you listened to it within the last week. And then C. I I, have. Okay. I'm just. (laughs) And then, no, it's something I always say. uh, I think people are getting annoyed with it. It's like electricity. Mm. It was always there. We Mm. had to harness it, Mm -hmm. tap into it. Why would we think that there's not other things we can tap into? That we can't see. That's not concrete. I mean, we don't know shit from Shinola, baby. I think we've kind of proved that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We don't know what we literally don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, let's humble ourselves a bit and go, there might be other shit we just don't. I'm not saying it is, right? But I'm not saying it's not. 100. percent I'd say almost every every society or civilization has some form of god or religion. So I mean, there must be something to the concept. Plus, I do think religion in itself is good the, because I think it adds discipline to well, people's it, lives. It, it does keep people some a lot of people in a discipline I guess it's box. All how you <laughs> use it, just like social media, just like a gun. How do you use it? Are you using it to control people? Or are you using it to actually help them get through tough times? A hundred Great percent. point. And a lot of people that sometimes people who have conspiracy theories as the grand cabal, a lot of the founding fathers were part of it. It's a big part of society is the Freemasons. We've talked about this oh, on yeah. the show. They don't say you have to be Christian. They don't say you have to believe in Judaism. They don't say any of that. They just say the literally, as I understand it, is a very secret society. One of the main and more or less only prerequisites to be a Freemason is you have to believe in higher power. All right. That's like the one common thread. You have to believe in higher power. So again, to Denny's point, whether you're a Buddhist and you live in the Middle East or you're in Africa or you're in Europe or China or the Americas, like everyone has a common thread. Like, sure, are we that ignorant and that uh, ignorant and that arrogant that we're going to say, we just landed here? We just landed here and this is it? Dog, you're, like, you're, like, you're, you're, pre- you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> right? I, I think we are, I do not think we are the only people that's been on the planet. It's my personal belief. I do not think we are alone. We and weren't I, even the first and, things. We had dinosaurs. We dude, had I think age, pre-civilization. Like, I think we got a whole human. fucking mad lib of bullshit that's goofy and weird that we don't even understand. Mm-hmm. With that said, it's time for some <laughs> Denny's, Denny's Random, Random facts. facts. Oh, our sweet Denny's does a great job searching the internet with great factoids to make us learn as people and a society. Vicky, our educator, she grades him, and if she loves it, she gives him an A. If she doesn't, she can give the A, and she can throw that D. Denny, so throw his first. Well, we kind of drifted from the topic. I thought there was a seg earlier, and then we kind of started going off on <laughs> religions and stuff. But to bring it back to a sadder note, but then back to a happier note, uh, there was a man named Kevin Hines who survived a suicide attempt by jumping off of the Golden Gate Bridge. When he landed, he broke his back. And he was going to drown, but a nearby sea lion saw him, swam up, 
lifted his head under wa- uh, over water, flipped him over, and brought him and kept him alive until paramedics could come and saved his life. That moment, he said, was so profound that he became a suicide prevention motivational speaker and now speaks about how valuable human life is. He Vicky, was saved by a sea lion. Vicky, we got sea lions. We got motivational speaking. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's an A. It sealed the deal yeah. on ketchup. I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so sea lions swam up. I, I heard it. <laughs> that, that might be the longest Beckett laugh. We have, we have to isolate that laugh and play it next week. All right. I'll find that one. Uh, uh, a, Vicky, you say? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I'm slightly <laughs> <laughs> distracted. Someone's got to laugh. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Becky, by the way, I love your laugh. Oh, Never you. change. Never change, yeah. baby. Yeah. Never <laughs> change. Uh, Denny's. So we've all heard of the Quakers, right? They thought England was so crazy, <laughs> they came to America just to focus on religion. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the Shakers, though? Mm-mm. All right, De- so, you got a lot of radio silence there. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. There's a group called the Shakers. They were called the Shakers, and they were it was a shortened version of the Shaking Quakers because of their eccentric behaviors in their worship services. They would dance and fall on the ground and stuff. Well, anyway, so this Christian sect believed that sexuality was the root of all evil and sin. Uh, all members even went far enough to chastity by avoiding even shaking hands with the opposite sex. Uh, you can imagine where this is going, but unfortunately, their membership declined from a peak of about 5,000 in 1840 <laughs> to three surviving members in 2019 due to lack of reproduction. I'm surprised they ever peaked. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, do, do you have a bone piece? <laughs> uh, so they came and went a blip in time because they just refused to reproduce. They never came, they just went. Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, what are your thoughts not only about Beckett's laugh, but about Denny's factoid? Uh, I knew the risk of innuendo was high in this one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Beckett, and he, I think he's hard over there <laughs> just because of the innuendo. The table's little microphone's a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was an A. It's an A. I mean, you're on fire, kid. We all know the question. I'll just distract Vicky. You'll get good grades. <laughs> They're still around. <laughs> Uh, so they did a study. If you were to stand at the North Pole and there was a giant hole to the Earth's core. Oh, my God. It would take 19 minutes to fall to the Earth's core. And then they did the math even further. If there was no core, it would take 38 minutes and 11 seconds to fall from one end of the Earth to the other end of the Earth. That's how far. It'd be like that Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Terminal velocity. Yes. I, you know, I had never seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure what? until... Get out of your uh, house. About... <laughs> you right? No, you're, you're right. I saw that a long time about ago. Se- I watched the whole thing about six months ago. It's pretty over the top. I fucking loved it. So the first... I, oh, you I, saw I, it. I did, no, it's good. So I great. did really it's like it. I, 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 I honestly didn't expect it to be that good. I guess I thought it was something different. You're like, we got to save the babes. <laughs> I didn't hate it, man. So I, Excellent Adventure is great. Bogus Journey, on the other hand, I do not <laughs> yeah. like the sequel. Well, I mean, that dude. movie creeps me out because it they, there's clones of them that are evil, ruining mm. their lives, running rampant while they're stuck in basically limbo. I brought the reference up because they fall forever. I mean, and, no, we're glad you, you brought yeah, it up. I can, explained it. Kanano Reeves had like one of these tracks, like McConaughey. Like everyone, like kind of gave him shit as an actor, but like people kind of warmed up that he's. He's like really good actor. Guys, He's yeah, a really yeah. good actor. Well, it's kind of like Vince Vaughn. I'm okay with people being one note if they are good at being. Um, Vince Vaughn's pretty much the same guy in everything, mm-hmm. but I love Vince Vaughn, so I, I'm okay with I'm him. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with him being Vince Vaughn. Except for breakup. The breakup was triggering. Dude, I saw that with Max girlfriend, and it triggering. fucking was uh, so. Triggering. Well, that was the like worst, worst movie I've ever no, seen. No, I could not. I thought I was going into a comedy, yeah. and that ended up into a seven-hour conversation <laughs> with my girlfriend at the time. It was. He's it's right. Su- it's such it, a bait and switch. I got sandbagged I, so fucking hard on breakup. No, I did not. Like <laughs> it was that like movie. Marley and me. I was like, oh, Owen Wilson. Uh, oh, dog. <laughs> this is gonna be great. No, and then, I, 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 then at the end, they're just like turning no, the knife I, in your spleen. I knew I was going into nothing but tears and dogs for Marley and me. And <laughs> I I'm, honestly, it was nothing but tears. I remember looking around when the dog dies. Oh, uh, horrible. Spoiler. Half of the people were fucking crying. Horrible. Oh, half everyone. <laughs> the writers literally sat around a table of that movie when they were writing it and were like, 
how can we turn the knife? Like, let's ha- so let's have the kid read a letter by the tree and like do all these things. I'm like, this is the worst oh, movie I've ever if seen. If you want to make the bird fucking cry with the waterworks, play a Billy Joel song that he just wrote, or talk some shit about d- dead dogs. Oh, yeah. it, it just, it, it, I don't know, man. It, it hurts. So there was an era where in 2000 to 2003, fantasy movies got real big and they started coming out with a bunch and they came out that bridge to Terabithia. I thought that was like another fantasy. That is the saddest damn movie ever made. <laughs> it is deceptively tragic. That's what happened. Horrible. I got tricked into that one. Haley Joel Osmond. What the fuck is that kid's name? Uh, pay it forward. That dude, the dude, ending of that comes out of nowhere and it's so painful. It was seven o'clock AM on a Saturday. And it was on TBS, meaning it's not a two hour movie no more. It's a fucking four hour <laughs> right. movie. Oh my God. And I got, cu- I, I got sucked into it on accident. I'm like, I was cleaning my room and it was on in the background. So um, I, I, I get so emotionally invested to it. Like, All right. This is a pretty good movie. And then the ending oh comes, and I oh, go, man. fuck you, TBS. You ever 100%. seen Simon Birch? Oh, my gosh, again! Dude, Ashley Judd's character in that. You go, what? It's the worst. I, I was I was hung over in college at Florida State, and I was just laying in bed, flipping around. One of these TV movies you get sucked into. It was Mandy Moore's A Walk to Remember. Oh, my gosh. Come in. That my, you had to know that was yeah, sad. Kick my, to the dick. Uh, my roommate comes in Kramer style, like, wanted to go get beers. I'm like, eh. Hey, that soundtrack that though. That, that soundtrack. Oh, yeah. uh, there, there's a Switchfoot song on that that Mandy Moore movie you're talking yeah. about, which is a depressing fucking movie. Sad ass movie. But it's good. It's good. It's depressing. It's, yeah. But it's good. That's good. Um, Switchfoot. It was there's there. a great song on that album. <laughs> it's but what it, yeah, again, Mandy Moore. I she's one of my biggest celebrity crushes. Really? Yeah, I loved her. Vicky, thoughts on what we're talking about? <laughs> we kind of went into dude mode. Get us out of here. Jumping around here. See, I've avoided any kind of movie whatsoever that I knew was going to be sad. Like, if we talk horror movies, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I may have seen it a long, long time ago, or I didn't see it at all. Has now, con- content you've watched before, has it ever made you cry? Oh, yeah. Well, I got stuck seeing Marley and me at the drive-in. Mm. So, yeah, I was on a date, so I didn't cry that much, but still. You're like, I mean, no, this movie's good. Yeah, you look uh, away. Yeah. I just took a date. That to- was your date? Was that a first date? No, what? No. Go to the saddest movie ever? <laughs> it's a shitty date. <laughs> it was the only thing playing at Lakewood so, Drive-In, okay? Okay, you want to make out now, I guess? But I'm over to say it was a shitty date. I took my ex-girlfriend to it, too, so. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, no, so... Uh, Dog, animal stuff oh, makes I, you cry. Oh, if I know, I'm I need to way. know ahead of time. Is there an animal in this movie? Are they going to be harmed in any way? If the answer is yes, get it the frick Damn. away from me. I was never like that until Chewy. And I'm not even kidding you. I turned into such a fucking bitch yeah. after Chewy, man. I can't <clears throat> even... They're, they, I'll be scrolling on Facebook and someone always posts that one video of some fucking lamb or a sheep in a fence and it's stuck mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's like rrr, rrr, and they're, they're saving it mm. so it's good I guess but the torture of mm, no. ugh, it, I can't do it Vicky no I watch um, that series Evil Lives Here and almost every single one of them has talks about when the person was a child and they did something to an animal oh, I gosh. turn the volume all yeah. the way down and wait for them to get through the animal story right, get back and then to I'll turn it back people. up yes. <laughs> people <laughs> yes. yes don't hurt animals people <laughs> come on get to the good shit <laughs> yeah Kill, torture. Yeah. <laughs> he took she, out her eyes. Right. I'm a guy that would typically so right. step on a dog's foot. <laughs> Fuck that guy. You're yeah. so fucking yeah. right. Give Dahmer a series. Uh-huh. That dog, was, Michael Vick, Don. Oh, Don, get him out of here. He's the worst. Yeah. I'm a guy that would typically love these amazing, like, uh, blue plan documentaries where, with Sir, or whatever his name is, with his amazing uh, voice. David Attenborough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's, like, doing all these things. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Z- zebras on the Serengeti <laughs> is whatever. Zebras. And then they have a lion stalking its prey. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want to fast forward this. I don't, I know yeah. it's the circle of life. I don't yeah. want to watch this stuff. That's horrible. Oh, it's rough. Hey, I, real quick, I want to give a shout out to someone who's in the uh, chat room, a special guest. R- remember Birdney from back oh, in the day? Birdney. Our old producer. She's in the chat room. We love Birdney. We are, uh, Last Senior. week was her birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, birthday to happy birthday. Birthday. And we, uh, we miss you and we wish we you were back you. on the team. We love you. Love you. Uh, Danny's give us. Do you have one more factoid? Well, yes. What do you guys want? You something want something sexy? 
I was just saying, you want to finish something happy, funny, <laughs> yeah, happy. happy. Let's get something happy. happy going, right, I'll save this other one for next week. I'll How do, a, I'll do a funny one for you guys. There you go. Uh, so if you hold your farts long enough and don't let them out ever, your body is designed just in case somebody decides to do that, and it'll reabsorb it into your circulatory system, and then it will fill in your lungs, and it will just come out of your lungs as you speak. That is the grossest <laughs> thing I've heard oh my probably God. in the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's fucking awesome. Don't hold dog. your farts in. Your body will protect you from dying, It'll, but it's actually really bad for you. Vicky, I know it's <laughs> disgusting and it's awful, but it is. It is. It's some good. Education. It's a biological process. Yeah, man. It reabsorbs into your bloodstream, then into your circulatory system. Then, when it fills your lungs, it'll either just come out of your breath or occasionally has burps. That is <laughs> the grossest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> but dog, great factoid. That was a good one, Vicky. What's your grade on that one? Uh, I know. Uh, Take your emotions out. It was actually a public health announcement. It's a PSA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, B. Be. Because you just can't. You can't sign off on that kind of so tomfoolery. No, no. Denny's great job. Awesome so factoids. Much. Really, really good stuff. We are going slightly long. I wanted to kind of get into a couple more things, and then we'll wrap her up. Um, a quick one, and just give me a, a quick thought real quick, y'all. Uh, dear Weird Whatever, I am struggling because I care way too much what people think about me. How do I get how do I get over this? Do you guys have any insight? I'd love to hear producer Denny's perspective on this. Glenn. It was uh, getting over stuff. Sorry, I was queuing up the music. That for is uh -huh. <laughs> so, so disrespectful to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker's barely hanging on. It sounded like you were wrapping up, so I wanted to make sure I had the song queued this, this time. This guy is barely hanging on and addresses Denny's like, they like, yeah, fuck you, what? He's holding in a fart. <laughs> Restated. All I'm, right, I'm Gl back Gl in the Glenn, game. by the way, we love you. Uh, yes. <laughs> we care about you. Yes. And we're trying to help you. I heard the cue. I had to load that up real dear, quick. Dear Denny's, I'll say, <laughs> I'm struggling. I care way too much what people think about me. How do I get over this? Do you guys have any insight? I'd love to hear Denny's perspective. <laughs> uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> now I feel bad. Uh, I would just say, I mean, I think adults by nature, as time progresses, just stop caring about a lot of stuff. I think that's a, if you can learn that lesson earlier and adopt that in your lifestyle, I think you could start off being happier quicker. Mm. But I think it's very tough because I think you have to go through a few embarrassing moments and stuff first, unfortunately. But I think, I mean, I just wouldn't, I would just try to in start incorporating that slowly and it, that it doesn't matter. You. Everything you think and worry about, a lot of it doesn't really manifest. My, my boy nailed it. I mean, I remember I would have such terrible anxiety. I'd go up to the second story of uh, the mall or school, and I was embarrassed by that because, I mean, who can't go up to the second story? You know, it's crazy. I would get the worst sweaty armpits, mm -hmm. and I, that on top would, <laughs> I mean, compile the anxiety. Now you're you're a 16-year-old kid. You know, in front of your crush and in, in history, you're sweating, you're you're freaking out. It does suck. But to Denny's point, I do think you got to take some losses mm -hmm. to get better. And you do. Uh, I think you, you start to not fucking care. And that's the that's that the is, beauty of aging. That's yes. the trade off because so much gets taken away from you while you age. Your youth, your looks, your mm -hmm. energy. But you do get this perspective this thing of. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get sweaty armpits right now. In fact, I'm attracted to a girl who has sweaty yeah, armpits yeah, yeah, yeah. because she's You're human. More real. Yeah, no. So uh, it's a great point. You got to go through some losses, man. Mm -hmm. You got to. It's great advice. Uh, my former mentor taught me. I was young. I was in my early 20s, and I was freaked out because some client was railing me. And he said, Ryan, here's how it works. Always do your best and forget the rest. He goes, 10% of the people in this life are going to hate you. 10% of the people are going to love you. And 10% are going to fall somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah. You know? He goes, listen, if you went over to the horse show, I was selling horse farms at the time. He goes, and you gave everyone in the tent a $100 bill. There will be people that will complain about it. Yeah, you're and, right. And, and also, 100% of your best effort, you could give your emotional yeah. best effort at something. And someone's going to go... Meh. It's yeah. mid. It's mid, Beckett. Mid. <laughs> mid. mid. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get me and Dennis to work on a video for four fucking weeks. And the first comment, meh. Meh. You're like, mid. fuck you. 
<laughs> Where's your video? Yeah, no, but th- that, that's that's very good perspective. Yeah. Um, I think your advice is keen. Like, you know, you, you know, for Glenn, like, you just... You, you just got to focus on yourself. Like you got to be more internal than external. Dude, mm-hmm. a thousand percent. I think we trip over ourselves mm. a lot on extra shit that doesn't matter. Stay focused to your goal. That's right. Mm-hmm. Not to turn this into a Tony Robbins podcast, but it's it's cliche and hack because there's something to it. Yeah. There's a reason why it's cliche. 100%. Because there's fucking truth to it. Yeah. Stay focused. Don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get caught up in the noise. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. All right, very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick. Fuck Peppa the Pig. Do you have that clip? You which one? Just of Peppa. Making fun of Do you know of... about this Peppa the Pig? Yeah. People are saying Peppa's kind of a dick to just people in general, and it's not the right vibe to be teaching our kids. Now, I openly do not know nothing about Peppa the Pig, and I'm getting them bold headline kind of Peppa the Pig moments, but them headlines, it don't look good for Peppa. So is he, he's a, a British cartoon. I, I think believe. it's a she. I think Peppa's a girl. So Peppa's a she. I so think she's a dick to her dad. So here, I'm, I'm going to play this kill, clip. I guess it's her talking to her father. <laughs> Daddy's tummy is just like a box and castle. You're silly, Daddy. Your tummy is too big. You've got a big tummy, Daddy. Is there a baby in there? (laughs) Daddy, you're too big to go down the slide. Daddy, your tummy is too big. Do not let your kid cuck you. No, 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 no. We are not letting that fucking happen. Daddy, you're stupid. You're dumb, Daddy. No, 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 no. Daddy and Mommy are paying the bills. Shut the fuck up and go to bed. In a loving way, of course. It does say the... I guess a message. I mean, I'm not really mad about Peppa I hear the Pig. You. I'm not at all mad about Peppa the Pig, but I do like going in. The on controversy co- I of love it. going in on cartoons. I think it's about time pigs push back. I think it's about time pigs push back. All right. They've been, okay, treated, I, they've been treated like shit for so long. They should push, push back. I like a sassy pig. I thought there was more to that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You want a sassy pig in society? I get it. <laughs> Maybe I should have brought up Peppa the Pig because I felt like my rant didn't really hit either, Becky. So we're, we're, we're all good on that one. I just feel bad for pigs. Well, finally, someone's like take it over. Uh, the yeah, I'm be- with you because Piglet's kind of weak. Yeah, P- Piglet, Porky's kind of weak. I Charlotte's th- Charlotte's Web. I le- yes. I Although think- he the the <laughs> spider's almost better. All right, go on, babe. No, 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 no. You, you go. No, 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 no. I had to calm myself. I was about to go on a big Winnie the Pooh rant. Oh, jeez. I ain't right. trying to do that. That's right. Go I don't want to bring up Eeyore go around on. this guy. Piglet? Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> I, Vicky, I, I have a major problem with the cast of Winnie the Pooh. The, I think they true. just I think they teach kids to be sad and fucking depressed, man. It's true. I think the only person that hates Winnie the Pooh more is his own son, Christopher <laughs> Robbins. No, the person that hates, hates Winnie the Pooh the most is Winnie. Winnie hates him <laughs> the most. Winnie, I think Winnie likes himself. He just gets in that honey and stuff. I think everyone else is like, <laughs> he's always being honey potted. <laughs> he's like pretty content with everything. Daddy, you kind of sound like being a little sexual. <laughs> <laughs> always getting that honey pot. Yeah, you know, you know how he does. <laughs> I just think his neighbors suck. They all suck so bad. I am so against Eeyore. Vicky, I know he's got mental health issues. I'm just saying <laughs> Eeyore's got to do the work. So the only stuffed animal I have from that series is Eeyore. Oh, <laughs> wow. Dude, yeah. what a drag. Wow. <laughs> well, even on Sesame Street, you had, uh, what's his face? Snuffleupagus? No. Oh, Snuffleupagus <laughs> is probably more uh, analogous. Uh, no, you had... Uh, Oscar the, the Grouch? Yeah, Oscar, Oscar the Grouch. Oscar had passion. At least he stood for something. <laughs> yeah, he was grouchy. He had a fucking opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He stood tall. I live in a trash can. Snuffleupagus? <laughs> It's tough for me to respect, though. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Snuffy. He was a weird character. Someone's going to send me an email. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> don't don't let your kids listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, just don't. It's a PSA. <laughs> okay, let's get serious. My favorite part, or one of my favorite parts of the podcast, is when we talk about local musicians. Last week, we weren't able to play this band. If you are a local songwriter, please send me your stuff. It does mean a lot to me in my heart and my spirit. I want to promote you. It's tough to get music out. Me and Denny's do music all the time. We're on the radio, and it's tough to get shit out. Am I am I am I wrong, Denny's? No, 
<laughs> I just, you told me to remind you. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, if anyone knows of a reasonable rental, rent, rental i have a friend she has two large dogs and she has some cats and she's looking for something she needs it within the next four weeks or so um you can send me an email at nancy 38 drew at aol.com when i say reasonable i'm like 2200 or less so you're just looking for a, a place where she can move in yes. whether it's a room that can yes. take animals exactly and okay. she needs it pretty soon and can people also email you at that uh that's link the same address if you want to set up a reading yes love it great and if you want that reading she'll do them she's the best uh this band our local artist this week is 33 lions their song is memories uh they're from lake worth they write and perform all their stuff and i love it this is 33 lions everybody thank you so much for being in the chat room we love you all bigfoot is real Whoa!